Hi friends, welcome to Kraku's online classes. I'm Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku and an alumna of Ayanandabad. In today's class, we'll be taking a look at progressions in series. Uh, given the uh, like shift towards arithmetic in CAT over the recent years, progressions in series is an important topic for you to know well because many questions that are based on other topics also sometimes involve some basic concepts of progressions in series. For example, questions based on number systems also in turn at times involve understanding the basic uh, concepts of AP or GP as such. So progressions in series is an important topic for us to uh, know well. Uh, this has some basic concepts involved. So in this particular class, we'll first revise the basic concepts that are involved. Once you have a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of progressions in series, it will be much easier for you to solve more advanced questions on this. Uh, these questions uh, tend to be a bit uh, tougher than your usual arithmetic questions because they involve a, a slightly more complicated algebra as such. This isn't just about deciphering what is given in the question. This is more about uh, knowing what to do once you see a particular question. You need to know and remember some basic formula in this topic. So this requires, this topic will require some effort, some practice and some dedicated time to be put in to do well. So let's get started. Let's first begin by uh, first uh, taking a look at the three basic uh, progressions that are they are AP, GP and HP that is arithmetic progression, geometric progression and harmonic progression. Uh, most of you would be very familiar with uh, arithmetic and geometric progression because these are the most common types of progressions that are asked in uh, uh, CAD. Harmonic progression is rarely asked because uh, it is not very easy to calculate terms or sums in harmonic progression. Still, we'll still be, uh, uh, we'll take a look at it because an easy question can be asked from a tough concept as such. So let's first understand what an ar arithmetic progression is. An arithmetic progression is of a series of the form 1, 3, 5, etc. where the numbers have a constant common difference between them. So in this particular series, you see that all the terms are uh, plus 2 greater than the previous term. So we can represent this series as a a plus d, a plus 2d as such. So this is how you represent a uh, arithmetic progression as such. Uh, please note if you are given that uh, say uh, three terms are in AP, then you should not represent them as a, a plus 2d and a plus, uh, a plus d and a plus 2d. That would actually be a, a counterproductive. In such cases, you should represent the terms as a minus d, a and a plus d. The reason why you should do this is when they are, there are three terms of this form, uh, you should represent them in this format because the sum of these three terms will then become 3a and then you will be removing one variable from the equation as such. Similarly, when you are given that there are five terms, you should assume a, a minus 2d, a minus d, a, a plus d and a plus 2d. So in general, when you are not given sum of terms or like five terms or fixed n number of terms, you start the series as a, a plus d, a plus 2d, etc. Here, d is the common difference. And a, in this first case, a is the first term of the series. So these two are the important uh, variables that you require to either find the nth term of the series or to find the sum of the series or anything of that form to represent an arithmetic progression we first need its first term of the series and the common difference once you have both of these values you will be able to uh, find any term of the series or any sum of the series so this is how you uh, 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 this is how arithmetic progression is defined the second progression that is often used is geometric progression so in the case of geometric progression there isn't a common difference, instead there is a common ratio. That is, the first uh, next term is a product of the first term and the common ratio. So they will be, uh, the GP will be of the form 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. In this case, the, uh, the second term divided by the first term is uh, constant throughout the entire series. So 4 by 2 is 2, 8 by 4 is 2, 16 by 8 is 2, etc. So in this case, the common ratio will be this will be constant throughout the series. So let's say this common ratio is R. In case the common ratio is R, you can represent the series as A, AR, AR square, 
ए आर क्यू एक्सेट्रा इन द केस ऑफ द सीरीज दैट वी जस्ट हैड इन दैट द फर्स्ट टर्म दैट इज ए इज टू एंड द कॉमन रेशियो इज ऑल्सो टू सो वंस यू आर गिवन बोथ ऑफ दीज वैल्यूज द कॉमन रेशियो वैल्यू एंड द फर्स्ट टर्म वैल्यू यू कैन रिप्रेजेंट द एंटायर सीरीज एज सच सो ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू जोमेट्रिक प्रोग्रेशन कैन बी डिराइव वंस यू नो दीज टू वैल्यूज यूजिंग अदर फॉर्मुलेज दट आर देर वील कम टेक अ लुक एट द फॉर्मुल इज इन्वॉल्व इन लिटिल बिट लेटर ऑन सो दिस इज हाउ यू रिप्रेजेंट अ जोमेट्रिक प्रोग्रेशन एज सच द कॉमन रेशो थिंग टू नोट हियर इज दैट द कॉमन डिफरेंस डी एंड द कॉमन रेशो आर नीड नॉट ऑलवेज बी पॉजिटिव और ग्रेटर देन वन द कॉमन डिफरेंस डी कैन बी नेगेटिव इन दैट केस इट वुड बी अ डिक्रीजिंग सीरीज Similarly, the common ratio R will can be also less than one. Again, in that case, the uh, series will be a uh, decreasing series as such. Suppose instead of two, four, eight, sixteen, you had uh, eight, four, two, one half as such. In this case, the common ratio is one by two. So in both of these are GPs. So it does not matter whether uh, what the value of R is, as long as there is a constant ratio between the terms of the series. uh now that you have a good hold on the basic concepts of this let's move on to the concept of hp so an hp is basically a progression whose inverses are in ap so basically as we said that the terms of a ap are a a plus d a plus 2d the terms of a hp should be a 1 by a 1 by a plus d 1 by a plus 2d and so on to calculate anything related to hp like the nth term you should basically calculate the nth term of the corresponding ap and then uh, invert it to get the nth term of the hp as such sums based on sum of series based on hp are rarely asked because there is no easy formula for that so this is how you do things when it comes to uh, basic concepts of ap gp and hp uh, one thing to note here is uh, as we had said when there are three terms in ap you should assume a minus d a and a plus d uh, when it comes to gp if there are three terms you should assume a by r a and ar the reason for this is that the product of these three terms in this case r will cancel itself in the first and third term product so you'll get the product as a cube so you'll be essentially eliminating one variable and calculating you'll be able to calculate the value of the series as such similarly if it is five terms you'll put it a by r square a by r a ar and ar square again the sum of uh, the product of all terms will be a raised to 5 so essentially this is how you uh, uh, depict a particular series if you have to calculate the values of the series so now that you have a hold on the basic concepts we'll take a look at what type of questions are generally asked from this so the questions that are generally asked is find the nth term or find the number of terms in common between two series or find the sum of series or find limits to a particular function using the amgm hm property in the last case you will not know that you are being asked a series as such what will be given is basically a expression or a algebraic expression that algebraic expression you will have to break down in the form of a series or in a ap or a gp once you break it down then you can use the concept of am is uh, greater than equal to gm is greater than equal to hm property to calculate the min and max values for that particular expression we will take a look at 3 and 4 in detail in a separate video because they are pretty vast concepts on their own the questions on these tend to be very difficult and we cannot give adequate time in this video in this video we'll basically look at the basic concepts finding the nth term and finding the number of terms in common between the two uh, series as such so uh, we'll be taking a look at these two things this one these two things we'll be taking a look at the in the second video on progression in series so now that you have uh, an idea of what is going on in each of these subtypes uh, and what type of questions are asked we'll take a closer look at ap so an arithmetic progression is uh, as we had said it is of the form a a plus d a plus 2d etc so the question uh, when you have to say what is the nth term of an ap we can say that the nth term of an ap is an is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d the reason for this is that we defined it as a a plus d a plus 2d etc so every n term is basically a plus n minus 1d here a is the first term d is the common difference so now that you have this idea 
सो एनी टर्म वेन यू वे यू आर सेट कि वॉट इज इफ द सीरीज इज वन सेवन थर्टीन एक्सेट्रा इन दिस केस वॉट यू डू इज यू फर्स्ट फाइंड आउट द कॉमन डिफरेंस इन दिस केस द कॉमन डिफरेंस इज सिक्स सो डी इज इक्वल टू सिक्स बिकॉज द कॉमन डिफरेंस बिटवीन एनी टू टर्म्स इज ऑलवेज सिक्स एंड इन दिस केस द फर्स्ट टर्म इज वन सो इन दिस केस द एंथ टर्म और सपोज द एंथ नंबर इज द फिफ्टी एथ टर्म सो एन इज फिफ्टी द फिफ्टी एथ टर्म ए फिफ्टी वुड बी इक्वल टू इन दिस केस ए इज वन प्लस फिफ्टी माइनस वन टाइम्स सिक्स सो वंस यू फिगर्ड आउट वॉट ईच ऑफ दीज वैल्यूज आर वॉट ए इज वॉट डी इज वॉट एन इज यू कैन जस्ट सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यूज इन दिस इक्वेशन एंड फाइंड द एंथ टर्म इज सच at times you will not be given uh, this so easily what you will instead be given is that you will be given the nth value you won't be given like the uh, first term of the series or something like that if you are given the nth value and you know the common difference then you can find the nth term of the series by using the formula an is equal to am plus n minus m times d the reason for this is that you are the incremental difference between the terms is always uh, the difference in their positions times d so the difference between the third term and the fifth term would be a uh, the fifth term would be a plus 4d so the difference between these two values essentially would be uh, a a4 minus a2 is basically the difference in their positions times d so essentially given a2 you can always find a4 and the com given a any term of the series and the common difference you can find any other term of the series using this formula so this is what you should employ whenever you are asked a question what is the nth term of the series this formula will make it very easy these two formulas you can make uh, easily calculate the nth term of an ap uh you can generally expect these questions to not come in uh, cat because these are on the easier side generally the questions that will come is that uh, you will have a nth term of a gp or nth term of a more complicated this uh, like for example the differences in ap or something like that we'll take a look at uh, more complicated uh, progressions later like agp in the second video so if uh, if you happen to be fortunate enough to see a, a question like this just substitute the values in this formula and you will get the answer that is required for the nth term of an ap now we'll take a look at the sum uh, uh, of uh, n terms of an ap in this uh, uh, in this video uh, we'll take a closer look at sum of series in the, another video because uh, generally the questions on sum of series are do not involve uh, direct uh, calculation they involve some amount of manipulation of information given so let us just first look at the basic fundamental concept of how to calculate the sum of n terms of an ap so essentially if you consider a ap of the form a a plus d a plus 2d etc to a plus uh, n minus 1 times d this is the nth term so if you if you add these two you get a 2a plus n minus 1 times d similarly you will have uh, another uh, pairs like this so you will have n by 2 pairs of this sort so the sum of a uh, arithmetic progression is n by 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d uh, you can you also know that this uh, uh, part in the bracket is basically the sum of the first term and the nth term so you can also call, uh, say that the sum of n terms is n by 2 times a1 plus an so uh, the sum of the first n terms of the series is also a1 plus an times uh, a1 plus an into n by 2 so both of these are how you calculate the sum of the first n terms so if you think of this in this way the sum of the first 100 terms would be there is 1 2 3 and so on till 100 so if you see 1 plus 100 is 101 this thing will appear 50 times so there will be 50 into 101 so this will be 5050 in case it is uh, not an even number even in that case what you have to just basically consider is that there will be one number which is in the middle because there is one number in the middle won't be an integer you will get n by 2 as a a uh, 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 fractional uh, uh, like decimal number but still the sum of the series or the concept of sum of series would remain constant for example if it is 1 2 3 4 5 in this case the sum of first and fifth term is 6 and for the third case there is no 3 plus 3 so in that case uh, you have 5 by 2 times 
six essentially so the answer the formula is still valid even when there is not an even number of terms now there is a shorthand way of writing the sum of the first n natural numbers so though for the first n natural natural numbers you can just say it is n in n by 2 times n plus 1 because if it is 1 to 100 it is 1 plus 100 so it is essentially n plus 1 times n by 2 so this is the sum of the first n numbers n natural numbers so these are the basic concepts of finding the nth term of an ap and finding the sum of n terms of an ap now let's take a look i look at a, a basic problem on ap if the 23rd term of an AP is 181 and the 45th term is 313, what is the 34th term? So you have not been, uh, generally when you want to calculate the nth term of AP, you need A, the common difference and B, you need the uh, first term of the series. In this case, you don't have either. However, you have been given the 23rd term and the 45th term. So let's basically represent the 23rd term. So 23rd term can be written as A plus 22 times D. Because it is a plus n minus 1d. So this is equal to 181. Similarly, the 44th term is a plus 44d is equal to 1 uh, 313. So if you uh, if this is equation 1, this is equation 2. Removing equation 1 from equation 2, we get 22d is equal to 313 minus 181. This is equal to 132. So d is equal to 6. Therefore, uh, substituting the value of 6 in the first equation, we get a is equal to 181 minus 22 times 6. So, a is equal to 49. So, now that we have gotten a and d, we can find the nth term of the series. So, in this case, the nth term of the series would be, uh, in this case, the nth term of the uh, 34th term of the series would be uh, a plus 34, uh, 33d. This is equal to 49 plus 33 times 6. Uh, this is equal to 247. So this is how you calculate values when you are given the uh, uh, you are given basic concepts of uh, this form. Uh, basic uh, uh, once you uh, are asked the nth term, you have to represent the information given as basic uh, linear equations. So all those linear equations get the first term get the common difference and then you calculate the nth term of the series. Now that you know how to solve this question, let's take a look at a basic question on the sum of uh, for, uh, uh, sum of AP. So this is slightly more complicated than just basically finding out the sum of the AP. Here you are asked to find the ratio of the sum of the first 15 terms to the sum of the next 15 terms of the AP. So sum of first 15 terms is pretty simple. The uh, first 15 terms will be basically 15 by 2 times 2a. In this case, a is 1 and d is 4. The common difference between the terms is 4. So 2 times 1 plus n minus 1, that is 14 times d, that is 4. So the first uh, sum of the first 15 terms is basically 15 by 2 times 2 into 1 plus 14 into 4. This is equal to 435. Now you are asked to find it uh, the ratio of uh, this to the sum of the next 15 terms. So how do you calculate the ratio of the next uh, 15 terms of the AP? One way you can do is that is that you can find the 16 term of the AP and then calculate from then onwards. Or you can say that sum of first 30 is equal to sum of first 15, 1 to 15 plus sum of 16 to 30. Now, if we calculate this, we already know this, then we can calculate the value of this. So, this is what we need. So, sum of 16 to 30 is equal to sum of 1 to 30 minus sum of 1 to 15. Now, sum of 1 to 30 will be 30 by 2 times 2 into 1 plus uh, 30 minus 1 is 29 times 4. So, this minus 435 would be the sum of the next 15 terms. So this is equal to uh, 15 into 2 plus 29 into 4. This is equal to 1770 minus 435. That is 1335. So the ratio of the terms, uh, ratio of the first 15 terms, that is sum of 1 to 15 
टू सम ऑफ सिक्सटीन टू थर्टी इज इक्वल टू फोर थर्टी फाइव टू थर्टीन थर्टी फाइव दिस इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी नाइन बाई एटी नाइन सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैलकुलेट बेसिक हाउ वी यूज द फॉर्मूला ऑफ सम ऑफ टर्म्स टू कैलकुलेट द सम ऑफ टर्म्स इन एन ए पी नाउ लेट्स एक लुक एट जी पी सो वी यूज द सेम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट the nth term of a gp is an is equal to a raised to a into r raised to n minus 1 we told uh, we had seen that the gp can be represented as a a r a r square a r cube and so on so essentially uh, the fourth term is a r cube so the exponent of r would be one less than the term number and here a is the first term of the series so an would be a times that is the first term into r raised to 1 less than the number of terms so uh, this is how we find the nth number term of the gp so if the gp is of the form 1 2 uh, 4 8 etc and we are supposed to find the 50th term of the gp the 50th uh, in this case a is equal to 1 r is equal to 2 so a 50 would be equal to a is in this case a1 is 1 Uh, R is two, so two times forty nine. So the fiftieth term of this GP would be two raised to forty nine. So this is how we calculate the nth term of a GP. Now suppose we have to find uh, the nth term from the nth term. So you sup uh, suppose you are given that the third term is x and the fourth term is y. So in this case, you can calculate the common ratio by using a Uh, y by uh, the common ratio r would be y by x. Now essentially, this uh, common ratio r. Suppose this this is nth term is x and nth term is y. Then the common ratio r would be, uh, in this case, would be y by x times raised to one uh, by n minus m. The square. So this is why when you uh, in this therefore you can say that y would be x times r raised to n minus m so given any term am we can find the nth term of the gp an as an is equal to am times r raised to n minus m so now the uh, so basically finding the nth term of an ap gp is fairly easy given that you have the values of the uh, first term and the common ratio in case you don't have those values you'll have to first calculate those values through the other information given and once you have that values uh, calculating them is just basically substituting the values in the formula uh, the formula for the finding the sum of the n terms of an ap is basically a into 1 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r so this is basically if you have 1 a plus ar square plus ar cube plus and so on you you can basically say that this is equal to uh, so the sum of the series is a uh, uh, a into 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r in case r is greater than uh, in case r is greater than 1 you can also represent this as r raised to n minus 1 r minus 1 because this is symmetric as such This into a raised to a into this would be the sum of the first n terms of the series. So suppose the uh, series is as shown one, two, four, eight, etc. And you are supposed to find the value sum of the first ten terms of the series. In this case, r raised to a is one. So this will be one into two raised to ten minus one divided by two minus one. So this is basically two raised to ten minus one. so this is how we calculate the sum of the first n terms of a gp now sometimes what is given is that you are given a uh, gp where the gp is converging so what is a converging gp in case r is less than 1 every time you multiply r to the uh, uh, series as such the value of because the common ratio is less than 1 the value of the term keeps on decreasing now as the value of the term keeps on decreasing the uh, nth term keeps on tending to zero over time so the uh, term to infinity would essentially be zero because you would be multiplying a number less than 1 to in, uh, when a number less than 1 is multiplied infinite number of times we'll be reducing it slowly 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 till the number tends to zero but never achieves zero in such cases uh, the sum of the series converges because the uh, 
as you keep adding smaller and smaller values the sum does not increase by much so the sum of the series converges to a value as n tends to infinity when r is less than 1 then the sum to infinity is given by sn is equal to a raised to 1 minus r so now suppose the series is 1 1 by 3 1 by 9 1 by 27 you see the values are progressively getting smaller and smaller as we go along so this value will tend to 0 and the sum of the series because these values are getting smaller and smaller the sum of the series will converge to a value this uh, value that it will converge to can be uh, will be uh, derived from sn where n tends to infinity would be a that is the first term in this case is 1 and 1 minus 1 by 3 the common ratio is 1 by 3 each term is 1 by 3 times the previous term so in this case this is equal to 1 divided by 2 by 3 this is equal to 3 by 2 so the sum to infinity of 1 1 by 3 1 by 9 1 by 27 is 3 by 2 so this is how uh, whenever you are given a sum to infinity this is how you can calculate please note that r should be less than 1 if r is not less than 1 then the value will not tend to 0 the, if the value does not tend to 0 then the sum to infinity will not converge in that case the sum will be infinity if the num if the series is 1 2 4 8 the uh, number nth uh, number would be would keep on increasing so the infinity term would be infinity so a sum to infinity in this case would be infinity the sum converges only when r is less than 1 so now that we understand this basic concept let's try to solve the question on finding the nth term of a gp so uh, if you see in this case uh, the uh, series is not a gp as such they are not a uh, the com uh, the common ratio is not constant among all the this now let's take a first look at the differences so the differences are 2 4 8 and so on so the differences are in gp but the numbers themselves are in not in gp so what do we do how do we find the nth term of the series so if your differences are in the gp of this form then uh, you can see that uh, the each term of the series can be represented as 2 raised to n minus 1 in this particular case because if this is like this is 2 raised to 1 minus 1 this is 2 raised to 2 minus 1 2 raised to 3 minus 1 this is because when you have uh, a gp as such when you have like uh, a a cube a uh, a uh, a raise a r square a r cube you know that when you sum up a gp that you uh, you get that answer as a into r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 because the sum of a gp is of that form uh, if your uh, common differences are in a gp then your term will be also of that form as such so you can find the nth term basically by finding the sum of the gp in this case the our job is slightly easier because we can easily represent the term as 2 raised to n minus 1 so in this case it is uh, this term uh, the 15 can be represented as 2 raised to 4 minus 1 so nth term or 10th term of the series would be basically 2 raised to 10 minus 1 that is 2 raised to 10 minus 1 would be 1024 minus 1 that is 1023 so as you could see that in this case we could find the 10th term of the series by expressing these as like uh, 2 raised to n minus 1. This was because the differences were in a gp. If the differences are in a gp then each term is essentially a sum of a gp in a way. Uh, the sum of a gp is a into r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. Now express your nth term as a sum of a gp. Once you get that uh, uh, the value for how you express this term as a sum of a gp, you can use that formula to find the nth term of the series. Now that you have understood this concept, let's take a look at finding the uh, first uh, sum of the first six terms of this series. So this is a basic gp where the first term is 1 and the common ratio uh, is 3. So as we know, the sum of the gp is basically sum is equal to a into r raised to n minus 1 in divided by r minus 1 that is 1 into 3 raised to 6 minus 1 or uh, 3 raised to 6 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 this is equal to uh, 729 minus 1 divided by 2 this is equal to 364 
so we, as you can see this did not involve much uh, uh, logic as such it involved just basically substitution in a formula so questions like these would rarely come in cat but knowing this concept is very important to solving the uh, problems that come on progressions and series because all of them will involve subparts like these where you are supposed to calculate the sub one of the subparts would be calculating the sum of the gp or sum of ap as such or writing down the formulas for that but a direct formula substitution like this would not come but still knowing these concepts and being very very solid with these formulas is required to solve any question that comes from this concept now that you have an idea about how you can do this let's move on to the next slide so uh, the next uh, topic is on harmonic progression so as we said harmonic progression rarely comes in cat because uh, this is essentially a slightly more tougher uh, 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 field because there is no direct formula for uh, either for the sum of the series or uh, for uh, any kind of calculation it is not easy to do that in this uh, particular progression this is basically a series whose inverse are in ap so the series will be of the form 1 by a 1 by a plus d 1 by a plus 2d etc so you will have uh, the series would be like 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 and so on here you know the 2 3 4 are in an ap they are basically uh, the common difference is 1 So one by two, one by three, one by four, one by five, etc. In are in harmonic progression. So to find the nth term of a harmonic progression, you basically have to calculate the nth term of an AP. The inverse of that is basically the nth term of the harmonic progression. So to find the seventh term of the given HP, that is half two by seven, one by five, two by thirteen, and all, you can see that the, you can't make out any uh, uh, for any kind of. Uh, uh like head or tail of this particular series they do not seem to have a common difference nor a common ratio between them so we'll first what we'll first do is like let's try to take the inverse of these so the inverse of this is basically 2 7 by 2 is 3.5 5 13 by 2 is 7.5 uh, uh is uh, uh, 6.5 so we see that the common difference between these terms is 1.5 a common difference between these terms is 1.5 and the first term of this uh, ap is 2 so the nth term or seventh term of the ap corresponding ap would be a7 would be 2 plus 1.5 times 6 so this is equal to uh, 2 plus 1.5 times uh, 6 that is equal to 11 so the hp uh, uh, h7 would be 1 by 11 so the seventh term of the given hp would be 1 by 11 so this is how you are supposed to solve questions asking for the nth term of an hp so now that you have basic uh, fundamental uh, uh, fundamental understanding of ap gp and hp let's move on to the harder questions that we are generally come in cat these questions are basically on finding the number of terms that are common between two series so we have seen how to calculate the nth term of a particular series the next type that we are going to handle in this video is uh, the number of terms common between two series we'll take a look at a problem where both the series are simple aps these are these are the most plain vanilla type of uh, questions that you can uh, expect to come uh, from this particular subtopic of finding the number of common terms uh, this uh, Uh, for example look at the following series it is 15 19 23 27 4 9 9 so in this case the first term is 15 and the common difference you can see that the difference between common difference between every two uh, uh, consecutive terms is 4 so let's say a1 is 15 d1 is 4 and second terms is uh, 13 uh, 18 23 28 so in this case a1 is a2 is 13 and d2 that is the common difference is 5 So there are two ways to solve this question. Let's take a look at the first way. So the first way that uh, we'll solve this question is by uh, calculating the uh, number of uh, terms in each series. So in this case, uh, given the particular uh, number of uh, terms, we can say that four ninety nine is basically four ninety nine would be fifteen uh, plus uh, n minus one times four. Four ninety nine is Fifteen plus n minus one times four. So on solving, we get n is equal to one twenty two. Similarly, six hundred and eighteen is six hundred and eighteen is thirteen plus m minus one times five. So m is equal to in this case again one twenty two. 
so both uh, both of these have 122 terms each so we have to find the number of terms such that both appear uh, that no, those numbers appear in both uh, series 1 and 2 so basically we have to find numbers such that 15 plus n minus 1 times 4 is equal to 13 plus m minus 1 times 5 and the conditions imposed on m and n are they vary from 1 to 122 and m also varies from 1 to 122. So basically in this range we have to find integral values and of m and n such that 15 plus n minus 1 times 4 is equal to 13 plus m minus 1 times 5. So let's uh, like arrange the numbers as such. So this on uh, rearranging this equation we get m is equal to so on rearranging this is 15 plus 4n minus 4 is equal to 13 plus 5n minus 5. So uh, this is on rearranging this is 20 minus 4, 16, 16, so 3. So 5m is equal to 4n plus 3 or m is equal to 4n plus 3 by 5. So essentially uh, every time, so we need integral values for m and n. Now uh, the uh, m would essentially be an integer when 4n plus 3 is a multiple of 5. So when can this occur? For 4n plus 3 to be a multiple of 5, it should either end in 0 or in uh, 2. When it is ending in 2, then plus 3 would uh, make it end in 5. And if it ends in 5, it will be divisible by 5 and it will get you an integral value. If it ends in say uh, 7, 7 plus 3 again will give you 0. 0 by 5 would be give you an integral value for m. But because it is 4n, this number cannot end in 7 because 7 is uh, essentially an odd number and 4 times a particular integer cannot end in an odd number. So the only possible values are where 4n ends in the number 2. So this can be 12, 32, uh, etc. So essentially uh, the values of uh, that n can take are n can be 3, uh, n can be 3 and uh, uh, 32 will be 8 etc. So this will increase by 5 each time. Correspondingly m will be uh, when n is equal to 3 this is 12 plus 3 15 by 5 this will be 3. When n is equal to 8 this will be 32 plus 3 that is 35 35 by 5 will be 7. So you get some numbers of this and this increases by 4 or so. So the uh, number of times uh, you will get a particular uh, number uh, where the last uh, uh, number that you can have in common will basically be the last time that these uh, this uh, particular series will occur as such now what is the last value less than 122 which is of the form of 4n so this is uh, 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 so the last time this can occur is when a n is equal to uh, to 118. Uh, 11, 122 will not give you an integral value of m. So minus 4 that is 118 will give you m is equal to 118 times 4 plus 3 divided by 5. This will be equal to 95. So essentially uh, the last value would be when n is equal to 118 and when m is equal to 95. So when n is, m is equal to 95 the number of terms in this particular series would be 95 is 3 plus 4 times, uh, uh, if there are 8 terms in this series, it was 3 plus 4 times a minus 1. Or uh, if, uh, so 92 uh, is equal to 4 times a minus 1. So this is basically equal to 23. So a will be equal to 24. So this uh, series m is equal to 3, 7 and so on till 95 will have 24 terms. These correspond to 24 n terms. So there are 24 terms in common between these two series as such. So once you have found out what is the uh, required, uh, what is the formula for the conversion as such, you find out what is the values for which m and n will always take integral values. Find the last number in that particular uh, this. In this case, we found uh, that because this limit is 122, 
uh, and uh, our numbers are essentially uh, 3 5 and so on and 3 7 and so on these are the first ones are increasing by uh, 5 the second ones are increasing by uh, uh, are increasing by uh, uh, 4 so because this is increasing by 5 the values that these will take will be 3 8 13 uh, 18 uh, 23 and so on so the last number which is less than 122 of this form would be 118 the next number would be 123 but it would lie outside this range so since this is 118 correspondingly this would be 118 times 4 plus 3 divided by 5 that is 95 so you have 95 here till 118 here this number of terms in each of these ap there will be 24 terms so there will be 24 terms in common between these two series so this is a more involved way of uh, more complicated way of arriving at the solution it has involved a lot of steps we can simplify this down by just taking a look at the number uh, terms that actually come in common so if you see the series as such you already see that the first term in common is 23 now from 23 onwards each new term will be 4 greater than the previous term. So this will be 27, 28, this. So any next term that will be uh, common uh, after that will be essentially 23 plus 4n. Secondly, uh, for, for the ne uh, next series, it will be 23 plus 5m. So every uh, next term in common between these two will essentially be a multiple of 4 and 5. So the next term would be 23 the LCM of 4 and 5 is 20. So the next term would be 23 plus 20, that is 43. The next term after that would be 63. The term after that would be 83 and so on. Now let's take a look, closer look why this is the case. This is the case because the next term has to be an integral, integral value as such. And that will be 23 plus 4n, 23 plus 5m. Because this is the least value that uh, n and m can possibly take, uh, such that both uh, these values will be equal would be 4 into 5. In this case, n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 5. When n is equal to n is equal to 5 and m is equal to 4, we get the least possible value where we will get the next term of the series. So the next term of the series will be 23 plus LCM of 4 and 5. So LCM of 4 and 5 is 20. So essentially, the number of terms common between two APs would be the first term plus the common difference would be the LCM of the common differences of the two terms. So the first term you find out the first term that you see is common between the two terms. So the A1 would be the term that is common between the two terms and the common difference of the uh, series as such would be LCM of D1 and D2. So essentially you get a new AP where uh, the first term is 23 and the common difference is 20. So in this case, we have to find a uh, uh, term, uh, the last term of the series such that the first term is 23, the last uh, common difference is 20. So this, the term that is in common should be definitely less than 499 because the first series ends at 499. So we have to find the last term of the AP 23, 43, 83 and so on such that uh, the uh, last term is less than 499. So the last term will be less than 499. So 499 is greater than 23 plus a minus 1 times 20. So this will occur when a is less than. Uh, so on uh, substituting on this side, we get 23, 499 minus 23 divided by 20. This will be equal to 24.8. So a has to be less than 24.8. So the last integral value that a can take is when a is equal to 24. So the last value which will be common between these two series when is when a is equal to 24 that will be 23 plus 24 minus 1 that is 23 times 20. So this is the last value that is common between the two terms. Since this is an AP with 24 terms, the number of terms common between these two series is 24. So the answer is 24. As you can see, the second way required a lot less uh, calculation as such but it requires you to remember the fact that this uh, the number of terms in common between two APs would be a new AP where you find the first term and the common difference would be the LCM of the two common differences. Once you know this then you will save a lot of time in solving this question. 
uh, now suppose the uh, two series that are given and we have to find the common term suppose these two series are not ap's both are not ap's then what do we do now let's take a look at a question of this sort so we see that uh, we see that the first term is an ap it is uh, uh, 8 13 18 23 so this is uh, a1 is equal to 8 and uh, the common difference is 5 but 2, 6, 4, uh, 2, 6, 12, 20, 30 are not in AP. The common differences are not constants. The first common difference is 4, then it is 6, then it is 8, then it is 10 and so on. So the common differences are in AP. If the common differences are in AP, then uh, because the first order difference is in AP, then the term of the series will not be A plus in, uh, it won't, if the, if the series itself is in uh, AP, then it is of the form uh, where Tn is equal to directly, uh, it is in some form where the nth term is in uh, first order as such. So it is n minus 1 uh, times d, a plus n minus 1 times d. So when the entire series itself is in like moving uh, in, uh, in a, if a uniform, fa uh, uniform manner, then the highest exponent of n in that particular series is 1. If the first order difference is moving in a uh, AP form, then the first order difference means that the uh, exponent of n in that particular form is of the order 2. If uh, So in this case, the uh, first order difference or the common difference is in an AP. So Tn would be of the form a n square plus b n plus c. So uh, let's just uh, try to figure it, uh, like understand this clearly now. If the num series itself is uh, of the form uh, uh, where it is moving in an AP, then Tn would be An plus B. If the first order difference, that is the difference between the terms are in an AP, it is An square. This is the zero difference is in an AP. First order difference is in AP. Then it is An square plus Bn plus C. Suppose even this is not in an AP, but the next order difference was in AP. In that case, Tn would be An cube plus Bn square plus cn plus d of this form. The reason why this occurs is that, uh, suppose you are differentiating this equation. If you had an plus b, if you differentiate the equation, you get the value as a. Uh, if you differentiate the equation by n, d t n by d n, you get the value of as a. So the difference between the uh, two terms will be constant. So this will be a basic AP. If you differentiate t n is equal to a n square plus b n plus c, you see that the differential of this with n would be 2an plus b. So because the differential is of the form of an AP, the if the first order difference is of the form of AP, then the nth term of that uh, uh, series can be expressed as an square plus bn plus c. If the next order differential is of the form of an AP, that means the uh, uh, exponent of n, highest exponent of n in that particular uh, series would be cube. This keeps on repeating. So essentially, it's just saying that uh, the first order difference, the com difference that you find between terms, that kind of corresponds to d by dn. If d by dn is constant, it means that it is an plus b. If d by dn is in AP, it means it is an square plus bn. Uh, an square plus bn plus c. If d by dn, d square by dn square is an AP, that means it is an cube plus bn square plus cn plus d. So this is how we represent uh, uh, Tn or the nth term uh, given the particular format or the kind of difference observed. So if uh, Tn is an square plus, in this case, the first order difference is an AP. So Tn would be an square plus Bn plus C. So let's try to figure out what the nth term would be based on the values that are already given. So when n is equal to 1, T1 would be A plus B plus C. This is equal to 2. When t2 is equal to uh, a n square plus b n plus c, that is 4a plus 2b plus c, this is equal to 6. t3 is equal to uh, 9a plus 3b plus c. So this is equal to 12. So essentially we are seeing that uh, the c term is not really making a difference as such. So if you, uh, on solving these three equations, we get a is equal to uh, 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 0. 
So on solving these equations, we get tn is equal to n square plus n. So the equation, uh, if the series of the is of the form n square plus n. Now that we know what the series is, we can try to find out how many terms will be in common between these two series. So we are saying that tn of the uh, second series e is equal to tm of the first series. So nth term of the second series would be n square plus n and nth term of the first series would be 8 plus m minus 1 times 15. Therefore, uh, we can uh, expand the uh, bracket as such and get uh, this is equal to uh, eight, uh, sorry the common difference is 5 so 8 plus m minus 1 times 5 so this is basically 5m minus uh, uh, 5m plus 3 so n square plus n is equal to 5m plus 3 now essentially if we see the squares value uh, in this case uh, uh, n square of uh, the last term is 420 because the last term is 420, uh, that is essentially when uh, n is equal to 20, you get 400 plus 20, that is 420. So the last term is when n is equal to 20. So this has basically 20 terms. Now, if you see the values of the twin, uh, numbers as such, you see that uh, n, uh, n square, uh, the square of a number tends to repeat because this is basically because of cyclicity of factors. Uh, any The square of a number generally takes the form of, for 1 it is 1, for 2 it is 4, for 3 it is 9, for uh, 4 it is uh, 6, for 5 it is one, uh, 5, uh, for 6 it is 6, uh, 7 it is 9, uh, 8 is 4, uh, 9 is 1 and for 10 again is 0. So this is uh, uh, 1 square is 1, last digit is 1, 2 square last digit is 4, uh, 3 square last digit is uh, 9, uh, 4 square last digit is uh, uh, 16 so last digit will be 6 and so on uh, from 11 to 20 also it will follow the same pattern because only the last digit uh, matters as far as uh, calculating the last digit of the uh, square is concerned so if this is the last digit of n square then n square plus n last digit would be in this case it will be 1 plus 1 that is 2 in this case would be 4 plus 2 that is 6 this will be 3 plus uh, 9 that is 2 uh, 4 plus 6 that is 0 and uh, 5 plus 5 that is 0 6 plus 6 that will be 2 uh, 9 plus uh, 7 that will be 16 6 um, then 8 plus uh, 4 that is 2 9 plus 1 that is 0 and again 0 plus 0 so 0 so the last digit of n square plus n would be of the form 26200 0, 0, 0. so essentially you can see that the only last digit that n square plus n that can possibly take is of this form. Now let's see our RHS. Our RHS is basically 5m plus 3. So 5m plus 3 when m is an even number the last digit would be 3. When uh, m is an odd number the last digit would be of the form 8. Now we can see that the last digit of our RHS is either 3 or 8 and the last digit of our LHS is 2, 6 uh, or 0. Therefore, there is no possible value of either n or m such that there can be a overlap between these two series. Therefore, the number of terms in common between these two series would be 0. There is no term that can uh, satisfy both sides of the equation. So the number of terms common to these two sequences, the answer is 0. So as you saw, this was a slightly more complicated question on finding the number of terms common between the two series. Uh, the Crooks of this basically lied in fi uh, finding a generalized expression for the nth term of the series. The nth term of the series when it's an AP or GP is pretty simple. When it does not follow this either of these two uh, formats, then you have to kind of improvise to find the uh, generalized expression for n term of the series. So this is that once you found the n term of the series, you have to find the relationship between them. And once you find the relationship between them, then you can calculate whether or not a common term between these two types is possible. As we saw in this case, it was not possible. So these are the two types of questions that generally come from progressions and series, finding the nth term and finding the number of terms in common. These two are closely related to each other. In the next video, we'll see the concept of finding the sum of the series and uh, questions based on AMGM property. Uh, basically, both of these are also closely tied together. Now that you have some basic understanding of finding the end term and finding the 
uh, uh, some com uh, terms in common, I would urge you to go through the videos that are given in the description box. Go and see all of the con concept tests. Answer all the questions that are submitted in the classroom test uh, classroom uh, test below. You will see individual questions. Please answer them. So as uh, this topic particularly requires a lot of practice. So make sure that you see all the videos. You answer all the concept tests. You answer all the questions given in the classroom session. And let's hit this out of the park. Thanks for tuning in.